So what we have here is a little timeline uh, with a little bit of an A-roll that I put down here so I can show you how I would approach starting a piece and how to treat the audio and the video on these sound bites. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the tricks that uh, I can show you. <clears throat> so I've got the young lady and the chef. And uh, I put them on the timeline with some music here. He'd done the real hard work. But granted... I want you to notice that uh, I just have the one channel one on here. It still yeah, wasn't... If I notice over here, it's a stereo time. signal. That's the way the camera that we recorded this with is going to... Produce. It's going to give you three other channels, though, when you lay this down here. <clears throat> what I did was, I'll show you what I did. I locked these when I brought them down. We're going to bring some other bites into this in a minute, but that's why it might look a little different than what you're working with. Um, you can delete the tracks. You, you can do anything, uh, but we don't want to have the, uh, the shotgun mic in the mix at all. You can, do, you can switch the channel configurations, a number of things you can do. But this is recording stereo right on the mic that we put on her into channel one. So that should be fine. So I, I've i got the, her clip and his clip with just the one track and both channels on that track. So we'll start and we'll talk about audio. The nice thing about Premiere are these little work tabs up here. I'm going to go to the audio work tab. <clears throat> I played with this a little bit. It's pretty simple. You want to always clip. Click the clip you're working on. Uh, the first thing we want to do is to go over here and we'll go to our presets and we will call this dialog. After we label this clip as dialog, we're going to go to preset and we're going to have it set some things up for us. Balanced female voice is what we want. For this, obviously, she's female, that should work. That's going to give us a nice EQ, an equalizer setting. <clears throat> it's going to take care of some of this. He done the real hard work, but granted, it still was an extremely timely process. It kind of made, I like how it, it juiced it up a little, but we still have tremendous, and it seemed to go with this DS program on. And that seems all right. We'll leave everything that it did. But we also want to get rid of that fan noise more. So we'll click on reduce noise. So that took care of her um, as far as the audio work tab. And it was just that quick. Hard work. But granted, it still was an extremely timely process. Um, took way longer than we ever anticipated. And being you can in click any of these on and off and see if you like it. I like everything that we did there. The presets turn on the equalizer dynamics, and we went ahead with our own reducing noise. Actually, we should probably bring that up a bit. It still was an extremely timely process. Um, took way longer than we ever anticipated. And being in Ebor City, there's also certain standards that you're holding. So let's go ahead and let's improve her color. As, as I told you, it's kind of flat looking. So what we want to do is go right to the color workspace, where obviously the visuals are much more important. We want to make sure we've clip, clicked on our clip. And there's some very simple things we can do here. We definitely want to use Lumetri color, which is kind of the default when you come in here. And we'll just go with creative. I like these. There are sliders and wheels you can manipulate. There are all sorts of things to experiment with. We can go back and we can check basic correction and, and do this. And, and I did this earlier with this one. This is pretty much all it needs. We can click auto. Bam, look what it did to her. All I, can do, I got to do to see on and off on this is wherever you see this FX, you click it on, toggle on and off. That's right out of the camera. That's with the basic auto correction on Lumetri. I can play with this, but again, I don't want to go over. 
My, maybe it's a little too warm. If you take it all the way out, you see what happens. She gets really blue. So I can just hit Control Z and reset that one. I could learn how to use the white balance selector. All these things can be handy. But we shot it close enough that uh, it looks pretty good. I could call up scopes. I could do all kinds of things. If you wish for me to work with you on some of that, let me know and I'll work with you personally on it. I'm going to lower the exposure just a tad. And I am going to take a look at my scopes. I am going to take a look at my scopes, which are right here. Again, I need to click on the on the clip so I get a reading. And just like I was showing you in the camera, I now may want to bring up my highlights and bring down my shadows. So I can do that. So if I go to my basic correction right here. I can affect things with these sliders. I can bring my shadows down and I can watch my slider. Doesn't even want to give me zero, so I'll have to drop it down a little bit. I can bring up my whites. We're just the highlight there in the middle. That little trace is touching the 100% right over here, this guy. This is a very mid-range shot. I might want to see what increasing the contrast a little will do for me. Get some of those highlights a little further up. I can bring my blacks down a little bit. <clears throat> that might be a little bit too sharp for me. But I could increase the saturation a little and that seems to help. I want you to play with this till you see what you like. If I want you to correct a little bit, I'll ask you to do it. I might drop my exposure just a tad. I'm looking between my eye and these scopes. <clears throat> the color balance looks a little bit to the red, but there's a lot of red and yellow in the shot. So we could play with that. I think the uh, I can accept that exposure. My biggest highlights right here, these traces are touching 100. Everything else is nice and in the middle. <clears throat> the blacks here and her hair look Pretty dark, even though the, the, they aren't touching zero. I add a little saturation. If I, again, I want to look at how muddy it looked coming out of the camera and how much we've done to it. You can play with some of these other things. I like the vignette effect, and it's very easy on this one. I can click on it. I can bring in an amount, and I can look around the corners of her there. It's kind of darkening. I just do it very subtly, very subtly. It draws attention to her. And I can play with the feather of it, which is how how sharp it is, see all the way there. How fall have it really fall off. I can play with where it is located. So I can move it a little bit one side or the other. The roundness will make it look a little different. But to me, that's a real big improvement here. If I go up to Lumetri Color, click on, click off. I might go back uh, to basic correction and just maybe bring that exposure down a little bit. Or maybe that, con actually, I've got way too much contrast now that I look at it. So I'll bring, out, I'll bring the contrast down while still keeping those trace elements at about 100. My whites are a little, and yeah, they look okay. So you can start with the auto and uh, maybe bring the saturation out a little bit. My saturation can be seen here. You can look into these scopes and how to use them in a little more detail easily, and I can help you find resources or explain it to you if you need me to. But you just want to make a basic color correction. I really do like on interviews to take advantage of that vignette. But again, very subtle. It might even be a little too strong right there. So I'm going to back off the amount Go the other way here. But just very subtle. So we have now improved her audio and video. Let's go back to the basic editing tab, which I have set to be a little off. There we go. Let's just have a look quick. Just on this music, if you're editing this piece, 
I came in a little bit right to the accordion. I, I thought that's a good place to start. He had done the real hard work. But granted, it still was an extremely timely process. Um, took way longer than we ever anticipated. And being in Ybor City, there's also certain standards that you're, hold to, you're held to. I'm just going to move my keyframe and my audio over a little bit so it comes up a little after she did. But that's just roughed in there. Okay, that seemed to take care of her. Let's go to the chef here now. Let's, we'll speed things up a little bit. We'll click on audio. We know we want to label this as dialogue, and we can use default. Then we're going to get our preset. And this time we're going to tell it a balanced male voice. And we're going to have a listen. We know if you've got that same fan noise. There's a third generation um, sous chef. In I can hear the fan noise. He was a little softer spoken. I can really hear it. <clears throat> so we're going to go to reduce noise. We know we used not about 9.5 on her, and we're just going to put that right about there. He's a third generation um, sous chef in this restaurant, Sobardo, and his family um, used to have a butcher shop many years ago. So we just... I'm not sure I like the DS on this. That's to take out the S sound. Um, used and that came from the preset. So you need to customize the preset to each person. Um, sous chef in this restaurant, Sobardo. Yeah, I like it like that. That sounds good. That sounds real good. That's all we needed to do to our audio. Now I'm going to show you a trick for the video, okay? We had her all done. So I'm going to just click on her clip. I'm going to hit Command C for copy. I could go up here to edit and hit copy too. Command C on a Mac, right? Now I'm going to go to him, the chef. I'm going to put my playhead over it so I can see it. I'm going to go up to edit. And I want to go to Paste Attributes. Paste Attributes shows me a menu of all the attributes that I've done to the lady. Um, you can see here the audio. We don't want that. We customize that up for him. So we're going to turn off all the audio. <clears throat> and we uh, I don't know of any motion we did, so that's okay. We're especially interested in copying the same color setting. So that's all we want to apply. We're going to hit it and boom. Just like that. And we, can, we did that even in the uh, audio section here. We can go back to our editing. We can see that better. Looks a lot better, does it not? We can go to our color. And there's the before, there's the after. So I want you folks to line up your, this is how we want to do an A-roll. Do your A-roll first, kind of mix your music in there and treat. Mix your music in there. I'm going to show you one more trick while I'm thinking about it. Uh, Well, let me show you, let me talk to you about two more tricks. Remember, I can use this for audio. So if I put a second sound bite in here for him, let's just do that. I don't I don't I don't, I don't want to copy and paste her attributes, but I can do his and now do the color. We'll just pick a little bite there. What I want to show you about the audio when I bring this down, I want to show you a couple things. First of all, I want to make sure I put my playhead where I want this to land. I'm kind of winging it here. Let's say we were going to have some more music. I also want to show you a little trick here <clears throat> about editing music. Let's say we were want to have just a second or two of music, so we want him to land there. We always want to look with Premiere where things are going to land. Okay, but as I become aware, this camera records four channels of audio, and it will drop them all on there. And all we really want is the first one. So it's going to drop them on 
<clears throat> on A1, A2, A3, and I believe on A4, and we'll deal with that in a minute. So we can lock these. We're going to have to let A1 on. We're going to let A3 on. What we can do is come down here and we can add a music track down below. So now we have A4 and we can, now we have uh, the music on A5 rather, and we can lock A4. Now they're all locked and only the number one is gonna come down when we hit overwrite, which is the period key. Or I'm sorry, when we hit, yeah, overwrite. <clears throat> there it is. Presenting. Now we can unlock these because we might wanna edit with them. Now our music is down below, we have to remember that. I wanna show you something about music. We could delete those tracks now, but we'll leave them there for now. Going to make this a little bigger. <clears throat> what I want to show you is, well, first of all, let me show you. Okay, so here's our second clip of the chef. It needs the full treatment. It needs audio, it needs, needs color. So we'll just go to chef bite number one, command C copy, bring our playhead over it, click on it, come up to edit, paste attributes. We want this time, we want the audio. Volume is okay. We definitely want these essential sound dialogue effects. And we want the Lumetri color. Boom. In the U.S., say, you know, uh, 100, like, strictly Sicilian dishes that maybe were not known. Sounds darn good to me. Looks very good. Uh, presenting uh, in the U.S., say, you know, uh, 100, like, strictly Sicilian dishes that maybe were not known. So... Okay, just a little trick here about editing audio and a review of, of how to use keyframes on the audio track. If I want to come out to what's called a sting, I'm going to come over to my music here. Bring my music up here. I'm going to come down to the end of this clip. Usually at the end, you know, there's a hard out. There we go. There's a nice fade out right in this area. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that out right there. And there's probably a better way to do this, but I kind of rough it in there. I'm just going to use some of it. I'm going to mark it in. And this time, I'm just going to grab it because I want to drop it where I want to drop it. I'm going to grab the audio only tab, even though there is only audio on this. I'm just going to place it down here wherever I want. But where, what I... What I want to demonstrate to you is how to make a little change right underneath that first sound bite. So that maybe I have a few pictures at the end now. Then I've got a nice fade out that I could fade to black on my last nice beautiful shot of the Cafe Santa Stefano. The key is that I want to make the change on the edit somewhere where it's not the sound full, where it's underneath the main sound. You can barely hear it under his bite there. So I'm going to bring it down there using the, the rubber band right under his bite so that it matches the level of the others. I can put an audio crossfade across it. Most of the time, you don't even need it. Um, sous chef in this restaurant, Sobardo, and his family um, used to have a butcher shop many years ago. So we Did you hear the edit? I didn't. So I can now, use, this is the sort of thing you guys would be doing then. I, I've got my ending basically laid in there. And this is how I do all my A roll first and make it really nice. And then I concentrate on nice pictures. 
So I can now bring my sound up. I'm going to rough this in so I can let you go here. Just to preserve the, and help preserve the name. Okay, that comes up too fast. As anything um, in the U.S., say, uh, you know, uh, 100, like, strict, strictly Sicilian dishes that maybe you will not know. Okay, and so I just... Again, I'm holding down command and floating over the rubber band. And when I see that little plus, I can put in my keyframes. If I put in two, I can affect things with the second one. The further apart they are, the slower the effect happens. The closer they are, vice versa. So now I've got a nice little... Here's where the edit was. In his restaurant, so right here. and his family... Um, used to have a butcher shop many years ago. Not even here. So Richard wanted to preserve. Uh, I've got my ending. Preserve their name. Presenting um, in the U.S. Say uh, you know, uh, hundred like strictly Sicilian dishes that maybe were not known. So of course, I'm just roughing out these sound bites, but I would get rid of that little half the word "so" that he was about to say by trimming it off. Is that maybe we're not known. And it comes up, and we have a few pictures, and then right on out. Okay, so that's uh, that's how I would treat. And okay, so by the way, I would do the same for if I had another soundbite with her. Every soundbite I'd have with her, I'd copy her and paste attributes, paste attributes because it looks slightly different. There were some color correction differences made on her that may not be necessary on him. Uh, I can go back to my color editing. I'm on my color editing here. I can go to my scopes, which are right here. Yeah, he's looking a little hot, see? So I can uh, go to basic correction, bring down exposure on him, and then I would, I would go back and I would recopy and paste on him. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. I'm trying to once I see the top highlights go off, he's wearing a wet, white chef's jacket, though. That's where my eye, there's a lot of white behind him. I don't really want my highlights to go above 100. That might do it right there. Shadows are pretty darn close to black, the black being at zero here on the left. Right over here is where I'm looking, guys. All of this was adjusted from her, so that should be fine. The saturation looks pretty good. That looks a little better. A little dark for my blood, but I don't know my... I can't really trust my monitor too much. Got to kind of trust the scopes. Might decrease the contrast. Try increasing the contrast. Looks okay. There's no mid-tone in this. I'm not a fan of that too much. But you get the idea. You could do more. Don't overdo it, though. That looks pretty nice to me. I mean, compared to that, that looks great. And then I would copy him. If I tweaked it, I would paste it back onto him. In other words, obviously, they were slightly different. So I would keep them. I would copy female to female, male to male. And one more thing. The color correction and the sound, if you needed to, all needs to be done to all the B-roll you shot. So if you're shooting in a certain area and you want to get things just right and then copy and paste that to everything you shot in that area, all the scenes from that area, that would work, and then you could tweak individually each shot if you need to, but we don't want to have dark video, colored video, when we can correct it. Uh, we don't want to have bad noise in, in audio, uh, especially in our primary recordings of dialogue, uh, when we can correct it. So I hope that helps you correct it.